And I'm not really got a title for the, for the message tonight um, unless you want to call it getting a whooping uh, from the Lord. Why don't you boys take this back there? Brother? Is Andy back there? I tell you, I need a DVD of that, and I need some of those Phil Kid CDs. Take with me to Maryland if you got, if you can make me a few, Andy. If you can, if we got some blank ones. But anyway, uh, Hebrews chapter twelve talks to us about God's chastening and chastising His children. Now, uh, let's look here in the Bible in Hebrews chapter twelve. And I preached a sermon on this about a year ago, and, but I want to just teach on it tonight because it's so important and so many people don't believe it now. Uh, we're living in a time of strange, strange Christianity uh, in our day and time. Uh, Brandon Bruce, uh, I talked to him this morning. He called from down in Alabama, and he was talking about the churches down there, and he said, he said the Southern Baptist is about ready to split over Calvinism. And uh, that means half, half dead and the other half deader. And, uh, uh, and the other churches are fighting over doctrine. And uh, he was talking about uh, churches that don't even believe the Bible no more, preachers that don't even believe the Bible no more. And I'll tell you, people, we're living in some strange times. And I'm going to be dealing with it if I can get my study. I'm hoping to do it on this trip. I was really hoping to do it this summer or this fall preaching about the modern church movement uh, here on a few Sunday nights, like I did like I did Baptist history back in January and February. Uh, but tonight, here in Hebrews chapter 12, let's look at verse number five. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked to him. That means don't give up and quit and get mad when the Lord has to whip you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. You look up that word scourge. That's what they did to Jesus Christ. They scourged him with a whip. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? I'll tell you what son he is. About two-thirds of them in the generation of you and me are living in. But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. In other words, you're not really a child of God. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, our earthly fathers, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not more rather be in subjection under the Father of spirits and live? That means you could die if you, ain't, if you don't straighten up. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. I mean, who enjoys getting a whipping? But grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. I guess you might title our study tonight, uh, When the Lord Takes You to the Woodshed. And um, this generation don't even know what that means. Uh, some of you were took to the woodshed when you were little. <laughs> and uh, I, I, we didn't have a woodshed. Uh, we, we had a bedroom or wherever it happened to be at the moment, back seat of the car, off on the side of the road or, or wherever it might be. But uh, we, we, we got whipped or spanked when we were growing up. We are living in the generation which tells us you should never, ever, ever spank a child. That's what our generation believes. And I want you to look at a verse of scripture over in, uh, uh, let's see here. Let's go to Proverbs chapter number 23. Look at Proverbs chapter 23 tonight, and I want to show you a verse there, and then we're going, I'm going to mention a few things about the Lord's chastening and why he does it. I guess God is a, is a mean, cruel, 
bad father according to the world that you and I are living in. 23, Proverbs 23, verse number 12. Proverbs 23, 12. Look here. Apply, I'm sorry, 23, 13. Withhold not correction from the child. Well, you say, well, it just says correct. Uh-uh. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Now, don't raise your hand. But how many of you felt just a little twinge when I read that verse? The truth is, a lot of you did. The truth is, a lot of you, something you said, ooh, beat him, beat him. And that's because we've been, we have been indoctrinated to think that, that we're beating a child means child abuse or being mean to them or hurting them. And that's not, it's like beating an egg. You know how to beat an egg? You don't just bam, bam. People think when the Bible says beat a child that it's advocating child abuse. No, no. Listen, there is not a book in the world that's against being mean to a child or anybody more than this book right here. We have come to live in the generation that says, oh my goodness, if you hit them, you're teaching them to hit. You know, uh, well, I don't know what to tell you except you're gonna have to take that up with the Lord. You hit them hard enough, you'll teach them not to hit. <laughs> one, kid, one kid said, one, uh, one mama said, uh, which would you rather have, a whipping or that? And he said, whip me, I don't care. A kid that says that ain't never had a real whipping. Listen, they'd rather do anything and get a real whipping unless they are just a complete, stubborn, rebellious brat. Now, there are some like that that don't understand a whipping. Now, the Bible said, if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. It ain't gonna kill him. He'll make you think he's dying. They'll scream bloody murder. You, they give it away when you just start to them with a ah! You ain't even touched them yet. And they're already screaming. Now, all that is showing us how the Lord deals with us. I don't know about you, but I have been whipped by the Lord. He's a good father. And I'm telling you, when the Lord whips you, you don't have, nobody to have to tell you it was the Lord. You know it, you know it in one second. I know why this has happened. I know what's going on here. The Lord, I mean, you know it, you know it. He, just like you don't whip your kids for no reason or, or don't tell them, the Lord will let you know. Now, here's our problem. We're so out of touch in this generation that Christians have started, it's almost impossible to get your mind to think biblically because the world, the, 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 even the Christian authors and the, are saying, no, 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 no. We know better nowadays. Boy, they're really producing a generation of good ones, ain't they? By their fruits, you shall know them. One way you know the old way worked better is look at the kids nowadays and look at the kids uh, 50 years ago, how they respect it. Now, what happened is there was some crazy old mean daddies and crazy old mean mamas that were mean to their kids and did take out their anger on them and did whip them just because they got mad or they was in a bad mood and did abuse their child. And what we've done, we've swung back the other way so far that, that we don't discipline at all. And this is not a lesson on child discipline. This is a lesson on God disciplining us. Amen? One guy said, God don't whip you. I said, yes, he does. A preacher told me this. There's a whole group of preachers that believe God don't see your sins. Now, let me straighten that out just a second. Judicially, God don't see your sins. Practically, he does. You say, what does that mean? Stay and stand in. My standing in Christ is I'm perfect. All my sins are forever gone off my record, past, present, and future. When I stand before God, there's nothing on my record. It's all gone. My state is ever how I happen to be living at any certain time. I can do good, I can do bad. And a lot of people can't get that through their head. They just preach on standing and say, one guy told me, uh, he said, God don't whip you. I said, it says he does, brother. He said, no. What? He said, if I go out here and get drunk and I wreck my car, that ain't God doing that to me. 
That's me doing that to myself. And I said, well, you can believe whatever you want to. I mean, I've never been drunk, but I've done stuff before and, and something happened, I wrecked my car and I knew exactly what it was. And I wasn't drunk. How many of you can think of at least one or two times in your life where you hadn't been done sinning one hour and bam, the Lord hit you. Raise your hand, please. That's everybody in here. I mean, and there's no doubt about it. It ain't, can't be a coincidence. He said, I know good and well what's going on. Okay, 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 Lord. I get it, I get it, I get it. And the best thing you can do when that happens is learn your lesson and say, God, I'm sorry. I'll take my whipping like a man. Let's get this over with and, and so I can go on and be blessed. Now, that's what chastening is. Um, I want to say just a couple things about it. And you're welcome to uh, answer, ask me questions or help me or anything you want to do with this because I am not in favor of, of, of hurting a child. I'm not in favor of child abuse. I don't think you ought to whip them for everything they do wrong. I don't think whipping is the only form of discipline. No, no, by no means. There's all kinds of different ways you can discipline a child. It should be a last resort. or it should be very seldom and not just... Every day, bam, every day, bam. Every, I know people, every time a kid hurt, I hit it. You know, every, that ain't doing a bit of good. That ain't doing one bit of good. I um, had one going home, going up to church one Sunday, and I was behind these people, and this woman looked in the back seat, bam. I looked in the back seat, bam. And, uh, and that, I thought, that ain't helping that kid one bit. My daddy said that kid had been hit more than Joe Lewis. But uh, it, it, ain't, it don't, don't do him no good. Don't do him no good when you just... If you don't quit, bam, you better quit, bam. You better quit, bam. You better quit, bam. That ain't gonna do no good. As a matter of fact, you don't even supposed to hit them with your hand, ever. Don't ever hit a kid with your hand. You hit them with a switch, the, hick, the rod. It's like that right there, except it's a stick. And he goes, whoosh, 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 ow, ow. That'll burn them little legs right there, and it will correct them. It's for correction. It's for correction. We had some bus kids just acting crazy. I said, I bet you ain't never had a whip in your life, have you? And they said, no. I said, I can tell. I can tell. That's, that's child abuse according to the Bible. A kid that don't never get a whipping is being abused. According to the Bible, and I'm here to preach the Bible, I don't know if you're a new age uh, uh, Hollywood uh, church worshiper or you're a Christian, but if you're a Christian, you're gonna like what the Bible said. And it said, if you, if you spare that rod, you hateth your son. It don't say spoil. Right. It says hateth. That's right. That's right. And, and you like the Bible now, right? Y'all like the Bible. I'm giving you the Bible. He said, but that's a little rough, isn't it? It's because you've been spending more time on social media and Christian books than you have the book. Amen. I'm not advocating child abuse. Lord, have mercy. I should have got more whippings than I got, and you should have too, and your kids should have too. And my, my daddy whipped me, but he didn't do it right. He wasn't, he wasn't saved, but it didn't hurt me. You know, i tell you one thing. After he got done, I, wasn't, I didn't do what I was, did again. I got sent to the principal's office when I was about, good night, I was about in the ninth grade, eighth or ninth grade one time, and I was 12 years old. And boy, I'm telling you, that principal got me in there, G.L. Bird in Nebo. And he said, Dan, that's what he called me, Dan. And I was like, yes. It never crossed my mind, call my mama. She'll get you. My mama won't get you. She'll get a lawyer. Lord, I did not want them to call my mom. I just, let's just keep this between us, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, and buddy, he turned me over and took a paddle out of that desk it looked like it was that. It looked like a two before. It probably wasn't, but it it was a one by eight, ten or whatever. And I bent over and he went, pow! I'm telling you, it felt like I was on fire. I went back and sat, you know, I go back and sit like this. Them boys said it hurt. Nah, I sit like that for about an hour, and it 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 felt like I was on fire down there. Anybody ever felt had that? You say, well, brother Danny, that's awful. Listen, we respected our principals and our teachers back then. I know, we're living in a different day. You can't do that now. You can't do that. Brother Mike, school, you can't do that nowadays. Now, I mean, there's too much law, there's too many suits, there's too much uh, people got their rights, everybody's got their freedom, and, and the teacher is really, you got your hands tied. I don't, what do you do with them now when they won't behave? 
I mean, if a kid just absolutely defies you and said, I'm not going to do it, kick them out. And I don't know. I don't know. Time out. I wish we had done that to us. I would have loved getting sent home. Oh boy, if I get in trouble, get sent home. Let's do it. That's what we wanted to start with. Time out. Out. Send me to the library. Anything. Just get me out of here. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God chasing in us. God chasing in us. Now. One thing you need to realize, it's experienced by all Christians. The Bible said he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. There is no such thing as a Christian who don't get a whipping once in a while from the Lord. And the Lord's good. The Lord don't hurt us. My goodness. If I got what I deserve, he'd have knocked my brains out a long time ago and put me in hell. But he's very good to me and very merciful to me. And very kind to me. I've got no complaints. I've been whipped by the Lord and the whole time he whipped me, he blessed me some other way. had not you? That's the way it's supposed to be. And a daddy, like a father does his child or a mother does her child. So every true Christian gets a whipping once in a while. Now, you're not expected to enjoy it. If you enjoy it, you're either sick or you, it ain't real. Uh, nobody enjoys uh, being whipped. I didn't like it. I didn't like it when my mom got uh, me when I was about five or six years old at a little Methodist church up in Clinchfield, and I wouldn't behave, and we was in church. And she took me out and broke a limb off of a boxwood bush outside the step and just wore me out. And I come back in there, and I sat down, and I was, I was good the rest of the time. I didn't like that. It, no, it's not, it don't feel good. But I tell you one thing, it makes you do better. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Do you, what did, after Jonah got out of that whale's belly and the Lord said, are you ready to go preach now? He didn't say, no, I ain't no say, I'm ready, I'm ready, Lord. Three days in that whale's belly, I've learned my lesson. Amen. It's like somebody told me they got in jail and got locked up. Now, I've never, been, I've never been in jail and I've never been locked up, but I think one night in jail would cure me of whatever Amen. problem I had. <laughs> I don't know if anybody in here has if been in jail, probably have, but I think one night would do me. I'd learn my lesson real quick, wouldn't you? Some people just don't get it. I know boys that get locked up, get out. Get locked up, get out. Go out and commit a crime. Go right back and do the very same thing I don't understand that. That's, I don't understand that logic. They've never been broke like a mule or a horse or something. Uh, buddy, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm a, I'm a big baby when it comes to punishment. I mean, I'm ready to straighten up right quick. <laughs> Amen? I get a, I get a when, a, when a cop pulls you over, it's like, okay, okay, I will behave, sir. I bet, David, I don't know this, but I bet David, after David lost that child and had all them battles and fight, I bet you he never looked at another man's wife. Amen. That's my opinion. I can't prove that, but I about bet you. But he learned his lesson. He buried his baby. People say, God wouldn't do that. He did it. He did it. He did it. The Lord smote that child. I had a man tell me not long ago, I was rebuking him for committing adultery and I was trying to be nice. And I was telling him, I said, listen, God, you can get in trouble. You can get, you can get killed. Like that. And he said, well, I serve a, a loving God. I said, well, whatever. I do too. But he'll knock your brains out if you, if you keep messing around like that. You're committing fornication. You're getting drunk. You know that? If you're saved, he, he'll, he'll whop you upside the head. Amen. He did David. He did Jonah. Amen. Amen. He did Samson. Oh, Samson kept on and on and on. Bam, there went his eyes. You know what Samson's problem was? His eyes. He couldn't keep them off them girls. He kept looking at pictures on his phone. He, he wouldn't quit. He thought nobody didn't know it. He kept looking at dirty stuff. on. Anybody in here been looking at dirty stuff on your phone? You better watch what you're doing, buddy. If you're saved, if you're saved, the Lord will hit you. You say, I don't serve a God like that. You got the wrong God, friend. 
You got the wrong God. That's what that guy told me. He said, well, the God I serve is a loving God. What's that got to do with it? The sun's hot. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Uh, the, the ice is cold. So what? If you do, God is a loving God, but he'll, chast, he'll chasten those he loves. You're not supposed to enjoy it. Amen? Uh, you're not supposed to despise it, and you're not supposed to faint. You're not supposed to faint. Now, next thing, you're not supposed to despise it. Uh, don't regard it lightly. Somebody comes around and, and says, uh, well, the Lord is showing you love. Is there a, Yeah, whatever. You don't feel like love to me. You know, it's like when you, how many of you, your parents ever said, now, son, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I say, whatever. Give me that belt. Let me see. Let's see who it hurts worse. <laughs> Everybody always says that. It's going to hurt me worse than it does you. That's a bunch of bull, ain't it? Uh, it hurts. The truth is, it used to kill me between me and y'all. There's not, neither one of them's in here right now, two of them back there. I hated whipping my kids. I hate the only time I didn't hate it was when I got mad and popped one of them when I shouldn't have. And I did that in the wrong spirit. But when, I, when they really done and I said, now look, you're going to have to have a whipping. I have no choice. Man, I hate to do that. Good night, I hate it. I know why people don't do it. It's hard to do. It's hard to do when it's right. Because you just think, oh, goodness, little old thing, I can't hit them. Uh, you think that's awful, but you said, now, this is what we're going to have to do, honey. I remember when they were little, I'd say, now, look, I love you, and, and I, but you know you're going to have to have a whipping for this. I told you that time at Crystal one time, we was in church. She, we was in church. And I mean, they was little, and I couldn't watch them all the time. Carrie, was, she'd want to sit with her friends, and I always made a rule, said, you can't sit more than four rows back. Four rows back. One, two, three, four. I said, I better not see you sitting more than four rows back. And so they did. So now they'd say, Dad, there wasn't no, all the seats was full. I ain't no excuse. Get up there. And, and, they, and one time I was up here like this and people started laughing. And I said, what's everybody laughing about? And then they started laughing. And Crystal was about four or five years old up here crawling around in the choir. And she'd peep out behind me and everybody laughed. And I turned around and looked and she's gone. And if I you say, oh, that's cute. You know what? I think you should do whatever you need to do to teach your kids to respect the house of God. Amen. Kids, it ain't cute when people disrupt church. It ain't cute. Now, if they're a baby and they're crying, they can't have it. That's, I understand that. But a kid, they, I, I've been preaching before, and some little kid be right here popping up out of the seats, and, and four or five people sitting around just dying life. And the mom says, ain't it cute? No, it ain't cute. It ain't cute. Shut that little thing down and make it behave while we're having church. And if it's too little, put it in the nursery. And if it don't need to be in the nursery, it's old enough to understand the whooping. Amen. And, and uh, I, I, I spanked her. I took her home and I said, honey, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I didn't, you know, give her two or three little pop, 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 pop like that. And, and she didn't do it no more. But sometimes you have to teach them. It teaches them. Don't you dare go out here and say, I said, be mean to your kid. Listen, if you hurt your kid, you ought to be put in jail. You hear me? You deserve to go to jail if you hurt a child or take advantage of a child or abuse a child in any way. But you, you, we're not to despise it. We're not to faint. What does that mean? That means don't give up. When the Lord hits you, don't give up. I know people say, well, I've lost everything I've got. I've lost... I've lost my house, lost my wife, lost my job and everything. And I said, well, the Lord must be. I know the Lord's doing this because I ain't been living right. I'll just get up and go get drunk. No, no, don't faint. Neither faint when thou art rebuked to him. Learn your lesson and say, okay, God, I get it. I'll start from scratch and rebuild. I'll go beg my wife to come back home. I'll go beg my employer to give me my job back or I'll get me another job. I'll live in whatever I have to live in. I'll get me a little old trailer or apartment or whatever I got to do and I'll scratch my way back up by the grace of God. I'll get my lesson. I learn my lesson. I get the whipping and I will not faint. Don't get mad. It's not God's fault you, you wouldn't do right. Uh, don't, don't back up, you know, uh, uh, don't, just get back up a better man. Get back up a better man. Learn your lesson. Don't get bitter. Get better. 
Amen? Let it make you more holy, more determined. If you endure chastening, the Bible says, if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as son. I mean, take it like a man, y'all. There may be somebody in here this evening being whipped right now. As something, you know, life is bad. Take it like a man, brother. Take it and say, all right, Lord, I deserve every bit of it. And, and he'll go easy on you. And as soon as it's over, the blessings will start coming back and back and back again. Amen. Now, another thing or two, and I'm, I'm gonna hush. Um, it's always profitable for you. Uh, anything that knocks a sin out of you is, is a good thing. Amen. I've heard somebody say, uh, well, I, I got cancer, but I got right with God and I quit partying and I lived right. And, they, and I've even heard people say, I thank God for my cancer. If it hadn't have been for that, I'd have been out sinning right now. That's a child of God that talks like that. That's a real Christian that talks like that. What they're saying is, this cancer caused me to get right with God and actually, God done me a favor. I wouldn't listen to him when everything's going good, so he let this happen. I know, I know what I'm saying is rough like sawdust or saw sandpaper, and I know a lot of people say, well, Brother Danny, God wouldn't let this happen. Well, the truth is he does. I'm not saying everybody gets cancer sinning. I'm not saying everybody has car wrecks in it. I'm not saying that. Sometimes stuff just happens. You can live, you can live as right as you can live and still get cancer and, and do right uh, and serve God. But sometimes, sometimes the Lord will allow things in our life to hit us and make us straighten up. And it's always profitable. Always profitable. If you live after the flesh, you'll die. I know of one, two, two preachers <laughs> and two other guys right off the top of my head right now that just would not get right with God and kept on sinning and kept on sinning and kept on sinning and finally got killed. Four of them. I, and I know a bunch more, but that's four right off the top of my head. And I could tell you their story. I could tell you their story. One preacher, he, uh, he, he just went out and lived wicked and wouldn't stop, wouldn't repent. And God dealt with him, whipped him and everything. Finally, the Lord took him home. You can go to an early grave. You can shorten your time. People say, you can't go till your time comes. The truth is, you can shorten your days on this earth if you, don't, if you just keep pushing him and pushing him and pushing him and pushing him, you can shorten your time on this earth. Amen? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the reasons for uh, being chastised, and then if you've got a comment or question, we're gonna, but we're going we're gonna to go. Number one is to keep you humble. Number two is to help you sympathize with other people that are going through trouble. Number three, to keep your affections on things above and not on this junk down here. Number four, to prove God's promises. They're real and true. And number five, to show God's grace is sufficient and he can take us through anything. Amen. All right? Anybody got a question or a comment? Yes, ma'am. It does seem like that sometimes. It sure does. You think, how in the world can they do that and, that, and I do one little thing get my head knocked off. And I, I don't know how to answer that. They're either not saved or the Lord's being long-suffering with them. And sometimes he's awful long-suffering, awful long-suffering. Sometimes people go for years, 15, 20. I know people that's really done wrong, and it was 20 years, and it finally comes. It finally comes. Um, I may fall over here dead and floor here tonight. That don't mean God killed me because of something I did yesterday. You can't say every time somebody dies that it was God's judgment. You can't say that. But on the other hand, sometimes God does do that. He chastens, he chastens, he chastens. And in a case like 1 Corinthians 5, he takes their life. He takes their life. Anybody else right quick? I have a question. Don't judge people on that because you don't know when they're getting a whipping or just going through trouble. 
That's right. Sure is. Just, yeah, get away with murder. They're going to get theirs one day later on in hell. We get ours now. Yeah, he said, he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. It looks like you don't go around whipping other people's kids. You know, you whip your own. Yeah. Right. Right. She said something there that made me think. Um, how many have ever felt like this? I, there's a lot of people that would hear this tonight and they'd say, oh my goodness, I don't want to serve a God like that. Some mean tyrant going to knock your head off. That's not it at all. That's not it at all. He's a kind, loving, heavenly father. Sometimes I feel like he's cut me a lot of slack. Has, have y'all ever felt like, buddy, the Lord has been, I mean, you'll do wrong and it seems like he overlooks it and then blesses you anyway. Sometimes I feel like, man, you've been easier on me than you have everybody else, Lord. If I got what I deserve, people, I'd never live another second in this world. I'd be in hell. And truth is, you would too. So don't you start this stuff of mean old God. Amen. He ain't no mean old God. He's a good God. It's mean old you and me. Anybody else right quick? It does, but I think if you're if it's because of sin, you'll know it. You'd know good and well. I know what you don't. You don't say, well, "What am I doing wrong, Lord?" Sometimes you just go through trouble. That's just life. It's just life. It happens to everybody, saved or lost. And Job, look at what Job went through, and he wasn't doing nothing wrong. He was perfect and upright. And I mean, he lost. If if it was nowadays, and Job's friends come and said, "You must really be, man. You must be full of the devil." Look what the Lord. And he wasn't. So don't try to judge somebody and say, well, see there, they're getting what's coming to them. You better just leave that up to the Lord. Yeah, when, when I got cancer, uh, I had people coming to me telling me I wasn't tithing right. That's why, uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. why I got cancer. They said you wasn't tithing. how they know? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you can't do that. Don't you ever run up to somebody and say, see there, You're, you, you better watch it. You'll have to be next. I'm, I'm tithing. I'm giving my tithes and I'm giving offering, buddy. And it might hit me tomorrow, cancer in the shoulder. You don't know. You don't know. But you can't always say that's the Lord's chastising. But when he's whipping you, you'll know it. If you don't know it, it ain't a whipping. Some trial or something. Anybody else? Right? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. And you know, the truth is, the world believes that. Even people on TV and everything, somehow, see there? Look what happened to him. In the back of their mind, they know there's some kind of payday someday. Anybody else, right quick? Amen, sister. Amen. That's the right attitude right there. That's the right attitude. Me too. Same here. Amen. Amen. Ash, oh, Ash showed up at our house a week ago, and she's, she's been with us for a week, and we, we got the cure for that. I know, good night, I know what you do. You know what you do at rehab? Uh, you get in the Word of God, you get your heart right, and you stay in the Word of God, and you stay away from idiots. That's what I've been telling her, stay away from idiots. 
Well, the Bible said, he that walketh with idiots shall be an idiot. Amen. Not in them words, but it says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That means he, you run around with idiots, you'll be an idiot. Amen. That goes for any of us. Any trouble you ever got into, you was with an idiot. Or you was the idiot. <laughs> All right, let's stay and be dismissed. You learned something tonight. Walk the chalk, buddy. If you do wrong, repent. The Lord will bless you for it. All right. Uh, let's be dismissed. We'll have a word of prayer. And y'all fellowship before you go. And pray for me. Be driving all day tomorrow. Pray for the services. The Lord will bless and his will will be done. And dismissed.